We're so grateful for your presence. Uh, we want you not only to come back, but we would like for you to be a part of this spiritual family. Um, I've been here for about six years, worshiping with the congregation. been connected for over 40 years with the congregation, but I've just come to love and love this group more and more. Um, it's not a perfect group, but we are forgiven. We're washed with the blood of Jesus, and he's transforming us. I'd serve Jesus if there were no one else in the world serving. I, I, that's my decision, but it sure helps to be with a group of people that you can count on, that you know that love the Lord more than their own lives. And so if you need that spiritual encouragement, if you're not a Christian especially, we're willing to sit down with you and sh share with you the, the good news that even though we're sinners, we can be saved and we can be pardoned. God wants to take up... Um, habitation in our hearts and help you live the Christian life and so uh, thank you for coming and, and being with us and uh, we, ha we have a lot of activities this congregation works a lot for the size of the congregation there's a lot of different ministries you can get plugged into uh, one special is the happy hearts group that's basically for those 55 and older there's no set law there's people that come that are younger than 55 that's fine that's good uh, but they do a lot of things. Last night we had a, a wonderful fish fry. We want to thank, uh, oops, we want to thank our, oh, where, I, I, I don't know. I guess it's not in there. Tomorrow I'd, I'd like to ask you to be praying for me. Uh, I'll be going to Brazil. Uh, Becky already left a week ago. Uh, our, our two granddaughters moved there three years ago, and so when we go to Brazil, we usually don't have a lot of time to spend with, with our family there, our son and daughter-in-law and the two granddaughters. So she wanted to go a week early and spend time with the granddaughters before I get there. So be praying for me as I travel. Uh, next Sunday, I'll be preaching at the Culto da Família, which is about every five years or so. The congregation's there in Belo Horizonte, uh, rent a large auditorium there in the city, and uh, they all come together for a war special wor worship service. So it's called uh, the family worship with all the congregations, and uh, they'll have breakfast at 9 o'clock, just a fellowship, and then at 10 o'clock the, the worship, and it'll go to about one, uh, probably at least 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And so it's, it's a great event, and uh, I've been asked to speak there, so be praying for with me for that. So I've had a lot of trouble with these. It just doesn't seem to want to work. Can you flip that to the next slide for me? Well, t turn to your Bibles in Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, and let's read verses 13 through 18. There we go. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom, and the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her is better than gain from silver, and her profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Verse 18. She is a tree of life to those who laid hold of, on, of her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. Wisdom. There's a lot of difference between wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge is just basically facts. You, know, you go to school to learn facts to how to... to learn about math and history and biology and, and, uh, 
English grammar and so on. Those are facts. But uh, today we really don't need so much to go to school to learn all those things. We've got Google. <laughs> And we've got hey, Alexa, or hey Siri and Alexa. I don't know if you're familiar with some of those things, but you can just, uh, our son gave us this apparatus and it's in the kitchen and you can just go Alexa, uh, ask her anything and uh, she'll tell you as long as it, or there are facts. But wisdom is much more than facts. Wisdom is, is knowing how to uh, apply facts or even beyond that, wisdom is, is, it teaches us what's really important. The Bible says that, that wisdom is worth more than anything you can imagine, anything you could desire. Wisdom is more important than all of that. And so, um, next slide here. If you can do that. There you go. There's a website. My son taught me about this website some time ago. It's been around for about eight years. It's called Quora.com. You've probably not heard of it. I had never heard of it. But it's supposedly a place where you can share knowledge and, and better understand the world. That's uh, what their slogan is. And there are some uh, over 300 million monthly users. And it's all over the world in different languages. And you can sign up for that. And uh, you can kind of limit the areas of interest that you want to be uh, I've signed up for it, and, and so I've, I've, my areas of interest are theology, Brazil, uh, technology, family, marriage. And so uh, people will, once you sign up, you can ask a question, maybe about law enforcement, about history, about countries, whatever you want to ask. Uh, one question I ask, is it better to rent or lease a car? Uh, or why, is it, why do people say that it's better to buy a car? And uh, so, you know, people, would, people that are qualified lawyers or doctors or people, teachers or people that have experience in the FBI, all kinds of, they'll answer those questions and it's a, it's a really interesting uh, website. My son answers questions about computer security and he's had over uh, almost a million readers on his, on his answers that the people have asked and things. So it's just, it's just a, a really interesting uh, website. But, whoops. But it doesn't teach us wisdom. It's knowledge. It's, it's interesting to get points of view. But it's not really the wisdom that comes from God. Read with me. I want to read this passage in Job. And it's a, it's a long uh, reading here. But it, the Bible talks lots and lots about wisdom, the importance of wisdom. And I'd, I'd like to, just to read this passage here. Job was a man that had everything apparently but he lost everything but his life for a while and he's trying to figure out life and Job chapter 28 beginning verse 12 but where shall wisdom be found and where's the place of understanding man does not know its worth and it is not formed in the land of the living the deep says it's not in me and the sea says, it's not with me. It cannot be bought for gold and silver, cannot be weighed as its price. It cannot be valued in the gold of Ophir, in precious onyx or sapphire. Gold and glass cannot equal it, nor can it be exchanged for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of crystal. The price of wisdom is above pearls. The topaz of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. Verse 20. From where then does wisdom come? And where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. Abaddon and death say, we have heard a rumor of it with our ears. Verse 23. God understands the way to it. And he knows his place, for he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he gave the wind its weight and apportioned the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then he saw it and declared it, he established it and searched it out. And he said to man, Behold, fear the Lord, that is wisdom. And to turn away from evil is understanding. 
So the source of true knowledge and true wisdom is God himself. And certainly the Bible teaches us, could you give me the next slide please? In James chapter 1, the promise is if any of us lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Pray to God, ask God. And he'll give it to us generously to everyone and it will be given to him. That's a promise from God. Pray and ask God for wisdom. And, and how he does that is probably in various ways. Certainly through experience. Uh, Psalm chapter 119 verses 97 through uh, 104. Let, let's look at that. Psalm 119 is exalting the word of God. But I just want to read this segment here in, in verse, verses 97 through 104. Psalm chapter 119 verse 97. Oh how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. You know, I've had teachers. I went to Kent State University for two years, had very brilliant and intelligent teachers, but I, most of them I don't think had the wisdom from God. Verse 100, I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. Just because someone's old doesn't mean they have, they're wise if, if their, their lives haven't been rooted in, in the Word of God. Verse 101. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn aside from your rules, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Though through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. So the word of God is a, is, is a source that God has given us and certainly we pray for it but we also study and meditate on his word and keep his law. Psalm 19 verse 7 says the law of the Lord is perfect reviving the soul the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. Wisdom is with the aged. Job talks about this and understanding in the length of days Yes, but with this uh, condition, with God or wisdom and might, he has counsel and understanding. So if, if we're older in years, we'll be wise as long as we're walking uh, according to the will of God. And Proverbs chapter 10 verse 13 says, By insolence or by rude behavior comes nothing but strife. But those who take advice is wisdom. So listen to people, other people. Uh, God puts other people in your in your path in your life your parents teachers Bible teachers older Christians can you turn that slide for me please okay I sent out an email about 10 days ago to our Highland Heights at googlegroups.com and if, you, if you're not a part of this group we have about 160 adult uh, members of this congregation that are on this list for some reason if your email did got overlooked then let me know we'll put it, put you on this list so that any of our announcements or prayer requests uh, any communication that you'd like to do with with the majority of the congregation I realize not everyone has email but the majority of our adult members do and uh, so I sent out this question asking for help for the sermon today and it said what is one of the most important things that you could share from your profession or from your life that would be good if we all knew? Uh, these are kind of the questions on that website Quora uh, would ask. But, but I'm wanting to get uh, from, from Christians, hearing from Christians. And so um, I'd like to share with you some of those answers that I got uh, from members of the congregation here. I'm going to read ten of these answers. One of them is not good at all, but I'll go ahead and read it anyway. Uh, it's one from one of our older gentlemen members here. He said, marriage is like sitting in warm bath water. The longer you sit, it's not so hot. Now, I, will not, I will not give Claude away. I don't, want, I don't want Patsy to get upset with him, so I'll just pass that one. But now here's some good ones. And, you, and it's not a secret who gave these, it's just, I'm just not going to tell necessarily, but you'll probably know from, from what they say, a lot of them, who they are. 
from a line man's perspective, okay? That's Adam Montgomery, obviously. I think he's the only line man we have here. If your lights are out for a long period of time and you have to hook up to a generator, make sure your main breaker is off. If not, it could feed back onto the lines while we are working on them. So he said it's good for all of us to know, but I think it's really good for him, all of us to know for him, right? So, okay, now here's some others. Uh, I try to give a compliment to someone every day. I love the smile I receive, and especially from strangers. So that's just important to be pleasant w with people. Another one. How important it is to pick a mate of the same belief to help you in your walk to get to heaven. I don't know if that's someone that uh, has a mate or, or that helps them or they needed that, but, but that's true. To, to, to marry somebody, that's what I always told my kids. When you choose somebody to marry, make sure it's the person that's best going to help you get to heaven. And uh, Okay, some more, more wisdom from our members here. Not everyone can, but if possible, be a stay-at-home domestic engineer talking to our ladies. Uh, if not everybody can, but if possible, be a stay-at-home domestic engineer. In other words, be a, a, a homemaker, you know, just because life is easier for your family, if, if it's possible. Uh, but that's, that's good advice. Okay, here's some more. Here are two quotes or thoughts that can apply to work life as well as your personal and your spiritual life. Every job is a self-portrait of the person who does it. Autograph your work with excellence. Always focus on what's in front of you. The rearview mirror is small for a reason. There are much bigger things ahead of you than anything you've left behind. That's good. Another advice from one of our members. One of the greatest compliments I ever received was from a seasoned public defender who thanked me for always treating his clients with kindness and respect even though they had committed crimes some particularly heinous. I worked for many years in a very adversarial, contentious environment, but strive to remember whose I was no matter the situation. Our faith should permeate every part of our lives, especially our jobs, because we spend so much time at work. God can be glorified everywhere, even in the criminal justice system. That's awesome. That's great. Some more advice. Everyone is valuable. Everyone has a story. Everyone is someone's child, grandchild, or sibling. For your information, I work in the area of severe chronic mental illness, addiction, traumatic brain injury, and long-term care. It's shocking how easily someone can be dismissed or undervalued because no one sees them or takes the time to know their story. Another is people want to be heard. I deal with customers from time to time who are very upset. Maybe it's because their truck is down and they've missed their load. Maybe it's because it's given them problems. It's been in shops a lot lately. Or maybe it's their first time to have a problem, but it's disrupted their schedule and delays, for them, uh, getting, delays them from getting back home when, when they had planned. Either way, when dealing with upset folks, it seems that the best way to displace their anger is to listen to them, acknowledge their situation, and then discuss with them options to help. Certain situations can't always be remedied in the best way to solve their problem, but by listening and caring about their problem, it will, in most cases, help the situation. This may not be very profound, and everyone may already know and understand this, but it's something I've had to learn and continue to work on. That's very, very practical and very godly. Another one. As a therapist, I find myself really encouraging others to take care of themselves. As a society, we've gotten so busy with worldly things that we do not make time for our own well-being, whether that be spiritual, physical, or mental. We push ourselves to constantly go at a pace that God did not intend for our bodies. And we wear ourselves thin to the point we aren't available to our families like we should be. Everyone looks for a magical balance. The balance is to say more yes to God and less yes to the world. I see so many unhappy people, and it has so much to do with the lack of God being present in their lives 
and a lack of seeing joy in their lives. Another point I stress so much to parents that I have learned over the years with my own children is that life comes in phases. Some are difficult, some flow along peacefully. We must never give up during those difficult times. Parenting is hard if you're doing it correctly. Discipline hurts because you don't want to see your child struggle, but it is necessary. And just this note here on, on this person's uh, comments. Thank, I thought this was great for the congregation. Thank you for all the lessons that really speak to us as parents. Our family has really grown spiritually since we've moved to Highland Heights. So that's good. Well, those are just some good pieces of advice to give, compart, uh, to give us wisdom, help us to, uh, to be better people, better Christians. But the one I want to leave you with comes from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Let's stand and sing. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for